Hello everyone. Hope you are doing good. Today we are going to continue with the chapter Our Changing Earth. In the last video, you studied about endogenic forces causing earthquakes and volcanoes. Now I am going to explain about exogenic forces. The exogenic forces act over the surface of the earth. They carry out their work in two ways. First one is weathering and second one is erosion. What is weathering? Weathering refers to the breakdown or disintegration and decomposition of rocks. It should be noted that this process does not involve the movement of broken rocks. Here, weathering of rocks is affected and controlled by a number of factors such as changes in temperature, frost action, biological activities, etc. Weathering is followed by erosion. Erosion is a process by which the broken rock materials are removed from the place of its origin. In other words, you can say that the upper layer of the rocks is removed or eroded. I am sure you would be keen to know about the agents that remove and transport the eroded materials. The main agents are river water, sea water, glacier and wind. In this chapter, you are going to study about all these agents in detail. Now, let's see what happens after erosion. You know very well that the upper layer of the rocks are removed by the process of erosion. These eroded materials are deposited somewhere. The process is known as deposition. Thus different landforms are created by the agents of erosion and deposition. So let us learn about the landform formed by them. We will start with the work of river. River always originates from highland such as mountains, plateaus. On its course it creates different landforms. For example, waterfall, meander, oxbow lake, floodplain, levees, delta, etc. Let us understand how these features are formed one by one. The first one is waterfall. It is formed when the water of the river falls almost vertically down the steep slope over very hard rocks which you can see in the diagram. A good example of waterfall is Jog Fall in Karnataka. It is the highest waterfall in India. Second one is Meander. You must have noticed when river enters the plain the speed of the river water decreases due to which it turns and twist, forming loop-like structure known as meander. Next one is Oxbow Lake. It is formed due to continuous erosion and deposition along the sides of the meanders. The ends of the meander loop come closer and closer. In due course of time, the meander loop cuts off from the main river and forms a cut-off lake, also called Oxbow Lake. This is clear to you? Now I am going to tell you about flood plain. It's very easy to understand. At times, the river overflows its banks. This leads to the flooding of the neighboring areas. As it floods, it deposits layers of fine sand and other materials called sediments along its banks. 
this leads to the formation of fertile flood plain in the flood plain the coarse materials are deposited along the banks of the river thus long ridges of low height are formed along the banks these are called natural levees the last one is delta you must have heard the term let us see how it is formed as i told you in the beginning river originates from high land and ultimately meets to a large water body called sea or ocean the point where they meet is called river's mouth as river approaches to the sea the speed of the flowing water decreases and the river begins to break up into a number of small streams these streams are known as distributaries the river becomes so slow that it begins to deposit its sediments near the river mouth or between the distributaries and form a triangular shape of land known as delta hope this is clear to you so children we end today's class here in the next class we will continue with work of the sea waves do subscribe my channel to get notifications about upcoming videos thanks a lot